Okay, this is the setup for testing the distortion due to clamping. Doing the interferometry actually set up in the machine is way more difficult because now the interferometer has to sit on this spindly tripod and not being able to tip and tilt the mirror when doing the alignment just makes the alignment way worse. But regardless, I've got it working. I've got it reasonably well lined up. There you can see our interferogram. So this also makes averaging uh, a lot easier with different ro mirror rotations. Because right now I've got the spindle in position mode instead of velocity mode. So I can take an interferogram and then one click, index 90 degrees, and index, index, and it doesn't affect our uh, interferogram alignment at all because it's just a completely separate spindle over here. And because of the repeatability of the coupling, the tilt is not appreciably changing every time you rotate it because the optic face is very well aligned and perpendicular with the spindle axis. So, this action, besides the whole pain in the butt alignment, this is a pretty nice setup. Um, but what I did is I took four images at 90 degrees with the clamping pressure very, very small, basically zero, just what was required to hold it on there. And then I torqued it to what I was using for the actual machining, which again, isn't a lot. Uh, it's not like I was really wrenching down on it, but tightened it down to that level and then took four more shots and I'll average the uh, four wave fronts of both cases and then we'll compare the results. So here's the results from those uh, tests I just did. Um, this is the unclamped uh, surface profile. Uh, this is what I've shown before except now it's averaged over uh, four different angles. Um, derotated and then averaged, so this should be a slightly more accurate um, depiction than what I showed before. Unfortunately, still a Strel ratio of zero. Uh, and then I tightened down the drawbar, did it again, and this is what we get. So it is slightly improved and there is a difference. But you'll notice the main difference is really just the that center portion there getting pulled down. Um, it does not explain or correct for any of the other errors uh, in the part. So definitely is a difference there. I'm just swapping back and forth between the two so you can get, get an idea of how it's moving around. Moved about 100 nanometers uh, when torqued fully. That center portion dropped down about 100 nanometers, um, which isn't a lot in the grand scheme of things, but it's definitely too much for, for what I'm trying to do here. I would have thought that this would have um, been a little bit reduced, or at least I considered um, the distortion when designing the uh, fixturing. That little groove in between the hail coupling and the rest of the mirror is to decouple the, any stresses from clamping, um, but I might have just made that not quite deep enough. The other quick note I'll add here at the end is um, to all the people who were commenting about the com constant surface speed, uh, asking if I used constant surface speed, suggesting that I use constant surface speed, um, saying that that could possibly explain the groove that we saw in the center of the part. Um, that is a good guess, but uh, as Dave Arneson has said, lessons learned in diamond turning don't always translate into normal machining, and that goes both ways. Uh, with diamond turning, typically you're running the parts way slower than anywhere near the, you know, theoretical surface footage anyways. And because the tool's so sharp, uh, it doesn't really care and is able to keep cutting and basically constant behavior way down slower than the theoretical um, maximum surface speed or optimal surface speed. Uh, all of the other parts I've ever diamond turned um, have not had that problem before where they've shown weird behavior as they get towards the center. 
and typically in industry constant surface speed is pretty much never used. Uh, whatever gains you would get from upping the surface speed and keeping it more constant as you go towards the center is sort of negated by the fact that as you spin up the spindle faster and faster any imbalance which is in the spindle is going to get uh, turned into a larger and larger force swinging around uh, once per revolution and causing the axis that it's the spindle sitting on to uh, start freaking out and have more and more following errors. So typically the spindles are always run at a constant speed uh, and the diamond's so sharp it can, it can handle that. Um, so I'm still working on it but I'm get, starting to get the idea that maybe this is just an inherent uh, machine geometry error. So uh, keep investigating, but that's what I've come up with so far.